Hi guys, my name is Danny and I'm going to be showing you just a quick look. I've already kind of put it back together, but I will detail just a brief description of how to fit the SLK 350 M272 Sport uh, composite intake manifold onto an M272. Uh, in my particular example, my C230 here, it's going to be a 2.5 liter. Um, not always recommended and not the easiest thing and I haven't started it yet so it's very possible it's going to throw all kinds of codes but considering it's not the easiest thing to get in there uh, I'm just going to give a quick walkthrough of how I got it out as best as I can remember as you can see the manifolds already in and is being bolted in now but considering there's no videos on how to do this I figured I'd just walk everyone through it um, you're going to start off by taking off both of the front and rear engine covers, the rear of course being uh, the air filter housing as well as the neck down towards your throttle body. So if we head into the other room here, that is this guy right here. So you're just going to remove these snorkels that act as the ram air, they just twist off. Um, your this entire housing right here which holds both of your air filters is going to pretty much just pop straight off the top uh, this neck actually goes from here down to your mass airflow sensor which then connects to your throttle body which goes inside the intake manifold so all this stuff's going to need to come off at some point I personally didn't elect to remove the neck until further along uh, that is your prerogative you are going to need to remove this breather as well so taking the whole thing off isn't going to hurt you in the long run just make sure you're careful with your mass air sensor as those are very prone to damage and when they go you got to replace them so we will just kind of demonstrate on this manifold so what we had here we had a bunch of connectors holding down both these looms on both sides which go back into the harness um, you're, you're going to start off by disconnecting. Normally, the ECU that runs the intake manifold flaps is going to be seated or seating right on top of here. You're going to unbolt everything around it, lift it off. These clips actually slide. So this one right here on the passenger side, you're going to just pop it straight. Oops, sorry, pop it straight out. Pop that one out, and then they should pull right back off of the ECU, allowing you to disconnect and store elsewhere, which will give you nice access to. This bracket, I have the other one currently removed, but that one sits right on here. Uh, you're gonna take both of those off, mainly this one in particular, because while this side of the engine is a little bit easier to move around so that you can get your intake manifold out, that side, uh, particularly just because this neck of this side of the harness runs right underneath, uh, it can be pretty tricky to get to. Um, you're gonna need as much room to move this around as possible, so, Anything you can get loose on this side of the engine, the driver's side, um, you're going to try and make as much space as you can to move that loom around. So additionally, we have you're going to have to cut some zip ties. Uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but I can point out some of them. Um, just put that back on. Uh, you will have, if you look, this vacuum line all the way to the back is disconnected by the throttle body. That pops right out, no tools needed from in the back. I obviously don't have my throttle body in, so unfortunately we can't show you where that's going, but um, yeah, you're gonna disconnect the throttle body as well because in my case in particular with the M272, um, I am going from a, I believe it's a 74 millimeter throttle body, uh, the SLK manifold that I have retrofitted that you will need the 82 millimeter throttle body. So Mercedes sold them from the factory with this manifold with the CLK 550 throttle body. Um, that is not something where you can just run the stock throttle body off of this engine or off of your uh, base SLK 350 as those both use, I think it's the 74 millimeter, um, part of the Mercedes upgrade with this manifold besides cams and a bunch of other things in those SLK 350 sports is the manifold itself, which is sized for an 82 millimeter throttle body. Um, there might be an adapter out there, but from my point of view, if you're gonna go to the hassle of putting in the intake manifold, you might as well get the power out of it that you're trying to. So go up to that 82 millimeter throttle body. Uh, I learned this the hard way. So as you can see, I'm putting the car back together and it is not gonna be mobile until that throttle body comes in. So you're gonna need the throttle body, the 82 millimeter, just go for 
a Bosch piece or a VDO, if you can find it, going genuine is going to be like $1,300. Uh, going VDO or Bosch, I don't know what the VDO price is, if there's even one out there, but Bosch will be, I think, three or 400 depending on where you look. Um, pretty important part of the car, though, so I wouldn't cheap out on uh, eBay, no name, whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah. That will go back there. You should also make sure you order the CLK 550 uh, throttle body neck or mass air neck. I don't remember which one it's called. That's that rubber boot that I showed earlier. That of course has a different diameter than the stock one because it's accommodating the larger throttle body. So you're gonna need both of those. Uh, total I think is, I don't know. I mean, if you're buying brand new genuine, uh, it's probably gonna be 450, 500 for the throttle body and the boot. Uh, if you can find a used boot, like I did, also in the mail, it's like 20 bucks. Just make sure you clean it up. Make sure it's not disintegrating or anything. You don't want rubber going down in there. Okay, back to the disassembly. So, you're going to get all these harnesses loose. So, that means disconnecting this bolt. Um, disconnecting here. Make sure you're bagging, labeling, taking pictures, whatever you need to do. This one back here. Uh, I did disconnect my coil packs just to give me a little bit more wiggle room. Uh, I don't know if that's a necessity, but I chose to do it. Um, we unplugged, that's already plugged back in, but we unplugged all the sensors at the front of the engine, as well as going to your vacuum pump, not vacuum pump, secondary air pump. Oop, that is snaked around right here. So secondary air pump, that one just pops right off the back over here. Um, these sensors for cam position and whatnot. Same thing on the opposite side. Uh, I did elect to remove my map sensor. Uh, that will require, at least in my case, uh, some clever adjustment as far as I can tell. And obviously there's not too many tutorials on how to do this swap out there on the internet. Uh, I believe the map sensor, the vacuum line runs into here and then the secondary air, there's actually, if you can see down here, a line that goes pretty much straight across. However, I did have to cut mine in order to get the old manifold out, so I'm gonna have to tee that and run another line uh, as that line has the same sort of silicone that you see coming off of here from the fuel pressure regulator, I believe. Uh, so that's not something where you can just pull off the hose and pop on a new one, at least not in this position. Maybe if you remove the air pump, it's a different story, but uh, beware, you will have to run a little bit of vacuum line. Uh, just for the sake of showing that, here's my old manifold. Here is the map sensor that is original, so that's pretty much what yours will look like if yours has never been replaced, but in order to get it off, I had to pop it out of the old manifold right there. So you can see I have this button plastic tab on it. I did snap it off, but I don't really care about this manifold anymore. Uh, I'm going to try and maybe trim it right here and see if it can run into that vacuum port. Um, other than that, we have, this is the one that I just had to cut to get the manifold out. That will become fairly clear uh, when you go to remove the manifold that it's not going to go anywhere without that. So as you can see, we have various sensors unplugged, disconnected. It's pretty much just this guy. Um, of course, the map sensor. Then in the back, you have two rear sensors. These are for your intake flaps. Um, those are disconnected. They're just hanging loose in my engine bay. And then this is the vent where I showed earlier uh, I had the hose disconnected. So all that's going to come loose because you're going to need to get that bad boy out of the car. Um, following that, uh, again, I disconnected the coils in the back. I actually unscrewed this one because I was planning on taking it out, but it turned out I didn't need to. So basically, you uh, unplug here. That one just slides straight back. This, you can actually just unhook from the fuel rail bracket. Um, keep in mind, we are going to be playing with fuel in this case because you're gonna have to remove the fuel man or the fuel rail and the injectors to swap into your new manifold. Um, additionally, even if you maybe purchase a second set of all that, so you don't have to do it, you are still going to have to disconnect the lines, the hard lines. So that will be right under here. So that is going to screw into this fitting right here that I have tucked away. If I can just get it out. So yeah, that'll eventually be right on there. I, of course, still have mine disconnected. Um, when you take that off, it will leak. 
a fair amount. There's still going to be fuel in the lines. It will be pressurized. So to stop it from being pressurized, you're going to take something small and preferably plastic. You're going to head right underneath this weird little cover here and you're going to insert it in there. It will relieve the majority of the pressure, so you're not gonna have 50 PSI or whatever it is spraying fuel out of this end. Um, however, it will leak out of both sides. So I waited a good while until after the car had cooled off because I knew this was going to happen and I was nervous because of course, uh, fire is in the equation whenever you have a hot car. It's the middle of the summer here and uh, fuel dripping down into the engine or underneath. But uh, that is, I believe, a 17 millimeter open face that you can just twist this guy off with. Uh, it is sleeved on there, so it's not gonna fall anywhere, but when you get it loose, it's gonna leak both ends. Uh, that's why this one's propped up. That one, I had a rag under it for a good while, and it kept dripping. So once you get that off, you should make sure you have the bolts. I believe that was for the throttle body back there. Um, what else we got? Fuel rail, you don't have to unbolt unless it is preventing you from getting to the harness. Uh, in my case, I can't remember because I ended up, t I'm pretty sure I unbolted the whole fuel rail. Just be careful when you're pulling it out that you're not wiggling the fuel rail itself because that is how you can tear injector seals. If you have injector seals, it's less of a concern, but you still could damage the injectors. Um, so. We don't want to be yanking on that because if we have everything coming out at kind of a diagonal angle from the manifold itself, you're risking damaging parts. Uh, so if you do unbolt these, which again, uh, you'd know better than me because if you're doing it, you're doing it. I already did it yesterday and I don't remember all that clearly because this was a lot of stuff going on. But um, yeah, so if you're taking them out, just make sure when you're pulling up the manifold, the original manifold, you are trying to keep that rail in position. Uh, what I did in my case, pulled off this whole guy with the rail and injectors installed. They sit right in these holes, the injectors anyways, and then the manifold, the rail, sorry, bolts, I believe it's right here, right here, and then, oh, where are we? Here and here. And then of course the injectors seat down there. Um, so once I had it out on the ground, I just kind of pulled it straight up and was very careful, wiggled it off slightly, popped right off, uh, cleaned off the seals because I did not have another seal set, oiled those up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that's 100% right to do, but I've heard it is. So I used some motor oil to seat them back into this guy, tightened it down so that the whole fueling assembly, uh, injector and rail wise, was done outside of the car. So I could just pop this guy straight back in. Um, where else are we at? This vacuum line I already showed you guys. Yeah, all these sensors disconnected. Uh, again, I believe this ran to the front of the old manifold, so that will likely not have a purpose anymore. Um, I believe it was the same with this guy. Um, that should be about it. Yeah. Um, so it's just a lot of unplugging, unbolting. Uh, oh yeah, and then of course, once you get all of those things out of the way, you're going to do all eight of the manifold bolts. So we have one in front. You may notice that's gonna be different than the others. Um, I bought a Harbor Freight torque wrench. So that was a little bit of a heart attack when I snapped that stud. Don't be like me. Uh, these ended up, there's a second underneath, third. So just to show where we are in the engine bay. And there's a fourth right down here. Uh, just another brief sidebar, kind of all over the place here. There is a bracket for pulling the motor back here. Uh, I did remove that just to give myself, again, some room to get this back so that I can get it out from underneath the rail and get the intake manifold out. Um, so I removed that bracket, but then same deal. Uh, you do have a stud. I don't know if oop, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. No, you can't. Uh, it is down there, right by. This guy, which you may notice, this end of the harness also unscrewed. I forgot to mention that. So just to show the full deal, when you're taking out this side of the harness, uh, in my case, in my country, the passenger side, that is one, whoop, two, and three. That guy goes right down in there. So that had to come out. Um, Oh yeah, and then this is, that's where that's gonna mount, right up there. I think I said that was for the throttle body before. It was for the harness, but, um, yeah. So, 
I do have my MAF unplugged. That was just one sensor back here, I believe. And then a vacuum hose. Um, yeah, that should just about do it. And then back here, we have the fourth uh, manifold bolt right underneath plastics there, which again, the reason you took those all the way off is so you can slide this guy backwards so you can get to that bolt. Um, another one right there, another one moving up, and then right at the front of the engine. Um, you will also have to unclip the fuel injectors, obviously. Uh, I should have mentioned that earlier because that's fairly important, but you can see they're right down in there. Those you just, uh, what I did in my case, not always the best move depending on how uh, crunchy your connectors are. Flathead screwdriver, stick it underneath that gray metal collar. It's easier to tell when it is out of the car. I think I have another one back here that's similar. Uh, come on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you see this gray metal collar. You're going to stick a flathead under, push that up which will release the sleeve, and then you can pull it straight off without really any effort. Um, so all the injectors, one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three, and then of course you will have the two uh, clips, same clips in the back for the stock manifold, uh, intake manifold. So those come off. Um, this was kind of all over the place, but just to give an idea of what needs to be done, I guess, to get the old fucking thing out. Um, it'll look nice. Hopefully it runs nice. Uh, I'll try and report back in the comments, I guess, in a week or two when the throttle body comes in. Uh, this car is going to be running a stock tune. Um, I'm a little skeptical of what it will throw code-wise. Supposedly it's a direct bolt-in, but we are going to have manifold sensors just hanging loose. So uh, I'll report back. We'll see, uh, see how it runs.